What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. So today I figure I would share my commute with you. So of course this is one of the main reasons I bought the Model 3. I do this commute five days a week. So that's closing the garage on my way out. I drive 70 miles a day, 35 miles each way. Uh, most of that is highway driving. I would say about 25 miles or so is highway driving. I haven't actually looked at the map. But I start the drive off uh, on a lot of dirt roads, which if you've been watching my channel, you won't be surprised by. So I have about three miles of dirt before I get to the pavement. And then uh, from the pavement, I have one uh, two lane road that I take for a few miles and then I actually get to uh, Divided Highway. From the Divided Highway, then I get on the freeway. And I take the freeway uh, for, like I said, I think about 25 miles, and then when I exit the freeway, my work is uh, within a mile of there. Um, probably less than that, actually. So on the dirt part, there's usually not too much traffic. Um, of course, I do all the, the driving here. The car, uh, rarely I can activate autopilot on dirt roads, but it doesn't work very well, as you can imagine. So I start the day off with around 80% battery. Uh, I use about 30% per day for my commute. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. If I'm going to have a long day, I will charge to 90%, but I just find that uh, most of the time it's not necessary. So you get some big potholes here. It's been raining nonstop. I mean, almost every day it's been, I mean, it's raining right now. Uh, I'm in uh, Michigan, north of Ann Arbor, and it's just been raining every day. And so the dirt roads, you know, if it doesn't rain, they're actually really nice to drive on. They're pretty flat. Um, I mean, they're not as quiet or smooth as pavement, of course, but they're usually pretty smooth. Um, there's not a lot of traffic and, and everything like that. But when it rains, they just, they get potholes and there's, you know, there's not much anybody can do about it. And, you know, our area is actually really good about coming through and fixing those. But when it rains this much, they can't, I mean, they can't fix them. They just have to wait it out. So it's, it's uh, not, not very fun. I don't really need that secondary camera the whole time. I just kind of like to uh, do it for the intro. But the main, the driving, is what you're interested in here. So some nice windy, curvy roads. Um, when they're in good shape, I can easily, I mean, at this point, you know, I can easily go around 40 on these roads. Uh, with the potholes and stuff, you go closer to 25 and slow down when you reach a bigger uh, hole that you don't want to really deal with. But it is beautiful at almost any time of the year. During the spring, nice green leaves. In the winter, man, it looks really cool in the winter. It's just like covered in snow. speed limit on uh, unmarked roads is usually 55 miles per hour in Michigan. Um, so most dirt roads actually have a speed limit of around 55. Um, not that you can always go that speed. But when you're experienced with them, when you're used to driving on them, sorry I know it's probably a little loud, but when you're used to driving on the dirt roads, you know, 40 or 50 isn't a big deal. Yeah, we didn't encounter one other car there, which is pretty typical. Okay, so my first uh, set of paved roads here. And it's always fun to take off at this point. I do use autopilot here. Um, again, autopilot's mostly intended for highway use, of course, but it works really well on this road. You always gotta be paying attention no matter where you're using autopilot. But even this early in my drive, 
man, it makes my drive so much less stressful, so much easier. Um, not that this part is usually that bad. So I don't, on my commute, I don't really encounter much traffic at all. Uh, school just ended, so... Change that. School just ended, so... Um, there, I'm expecting there to not be really much traffic at all. But even, you know, when school is in session, I don't encounter too much traffic on my way to work, which is just really nice. I'm coming from, I mean, as you saw from where we just came from, uh, not too populated area. I am going into the city, but I'm in the very, uh, I'm coming from the north uh, and, and from the east a little bit. Oh, look at that, a Model X. That's a pretty rare sight out here. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, they waved at me, so that's cool. Um, I did wave back. But anyway, uh, it's not very populated here, and then I, I am going into the city, but I go to the very northeast corner of the city, and I'm coming from the northeast, so uh, I, I just don't normally have much traffic. So the auto wipers are on right now. I don't know, man. Some updates... They seem like they work really well, and then other times they just don't seem to do anything. So, there, I just did that myself manually. You can tell I did it because this popped up. If you press the wiper button, the wiper controls will come up for you. But yeah, we're being followed by that Model X. That's pretty cool. That's, like I said, that's really rare to see another Tesla out here. I think I have seen this this X driving around this area, uh, but only once or twice before, so nice cameo for the video. So let's leave the auto wipers, see if they'll actually do their job without me doing it. Still nothing. This is pretty ridiculous. But, I mean, I can see fine, so it's not that big of a deal, but they really should be, you know, doing their thing by now. So it's really convenient having this car, um, you know, for, for doing a lot of driving, because before, I was filling up usually twice a week uh, at the gas station, and, you know, it, it only takes, you know, five minutes or something, but that's five minutes twice a week. You have to go out of your way either on your way to work or on the way home. It's usually never convenient. You're not like, oh, I have plenty of time. You're like, I know I don't work. Like, oh my gosh, I'm in a hurry. I have to stop and get gas. What the heck? This is gonna make me late or something. Um, so it is really nice just having like that full tank every morning. And just for my needs, I I do do a lot of driving. I um, normally have uh, 70 mile days, obviously every day. Um, but then like I'll go to my mom's house once a week and that's like a hundred fifty mile day for me or a little less than that actually maybe 120 miles somewhere on there but even on those days you know I don't even have to fill the 90 percent on those days I'll still just do 80 percent and I get home with with plenty you know of, of range left and it's not a big deal so we're on this divided highway I like to take off there unfortunately we had to leave our Model X buddy in the dust but that's okay um, so again, another great place for autopilot. So on the divided highway, uh, autopilot works really well. But it does kind of move into those turn lanes as you pass them. So we just pass like a, a left, a Michigan left there. Um, when the lane opens up, the car does kind of wander into those sometimes. Um, but it's usually not too bad. So it's doing really, really well right now, actually. It's not doing it at all. But 
Anyway, like I was saying, this car is just so convenient. You know, the only thing that I have to do is the windshield wiper fluid. And I do have to do that pretty often. Um, just because it doesn't even hold a full gallon, which is like the most annoying thing. Like, windshield wiper fluid comes in a gallon. Let me pass this truck. So, windshield wiper fluid comes in a gallon, and you want me to buy that and then fill the car with it, but then you're gonna make me have a little bit left over. It's just like, it's not that big of a deal, but it is really annoying. So, I just filled it and I left the bottle in the front. So that next time when I'm ready, um, you know, when I need some more, I'll have a little bit left over there. Uh oh, looks like we got something going on here. See some sirens up ahead. Oh, that might be past our intersection. So the car's doing all the braking and everything. I'm, you know, letting autopilot do its thing. We do, we are missing some regen. Um, I'm not sure why. It might be the temperature. It's only 55 out, you know, it's June. It's ridiculous. June 17th. So I am driving the long range all wheel drive uh, Model 3. It was built in October 2018. I picked it up in February. Uh, it was an inventory car. It had about 3,000 miles on it when I picked it up, so I got a pretty nice discount for that. And it didn't have uh, any problems. There was uh, the rear passenger door handle would stick. That was messed up. Um, but mobile service came out to my work uh, within a couple weeks and fixed that right away. And they actually replaced all my door handles, which was uh, really nice of them. And I haven't had any issues since then. Yeah, this is... So, <laughs> of course, I say there's usually no traffic and then this happens but this is very strange there's obviously some kind of accident or something up ahead I saw the sirens from far away but I have no idea what's going on oh there's the Model X again just past us let me check the okay so we are getting on 23 sometimes if there's a lot of traffic um, it'll route me on this road which is old US 23 uh, it has a couple stoplights but it's still pretty fast so the speed limits in Michigan are 70 on the highway, but it's pretty rare to actually go that speed. Uh, most people are going 75 or 80. Uh, if you're not in the slow lane, then you're definitely going more than 70 or you're going to be holding up traffic. All right, well, I'm going to skip past this is <laughs> uh, going to be really boring. So I've, I'll uh, come back in once we see what's going on up here. All right, so it seems like we're almost there. That is one of the best. I, that took a while, but that's one of the best things about autopilot is situations like that where you're just stuck in bumper to bumper traffic and it's taking forever. The car just does it all and it's so good at it. And you don't have to like even pay that much attention because you're going so slow. The car doesn't really make any mistakes or anything. Um, so yeah, that is one of the best features of autopilot. So I don't know what's going on. We're like, now we're here and there's nothing here. So that's pretty weird. Um, I do like to turn autopilot on here. Just always see if it can take this left turn. Um, it's done it a few times. Gotta really pay attention, but Looks no. We're gonna, we we're gonna drive right into that guy. I don't want to do that. I don't know if he's letting me in. Yeah, he is. Okay. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I always test it, but you really gotta be ready to take over. So I'll just click here to change the speed limit. Have it set for three over, but we'll go 75 here. Got a big semi, and the car actually seems to be not slowing down. So I'm gonna take over and get behind that semi and 
then we can turn on autopilot. So from here, so most times the car uh, exits the freeway and merges on really well. Every once in a while, like you just saw, it, it doesn't. There's an obstacle it's not really ready to deal with. So I'll take over and get on. And then once I'm on, um, autopilot does pretty much everything. Uh, sometimes, you know, the lane changes and things are a little too timid. So I'll take over for those two, just depending on the situation, what kind of traffic is around. But most of the drive, the car does pretty much all of it. So you can set your following distance. Um, I've noticed in the latest updates that it seems to have increased a bit. So I'm on 2019.20.1, and it's uh, it seemed like the following distance increased starting with um, 16.2. So I kind of hope that goes back to the way it was, but I mean, at least you can adjust it. So this camera, things are actually a lot closer than they look. So when I look at my rear view mirror, that guy is like right on the edge of being too close to me. Um, and you know, people just <laughs> like on the highway, they're like, there's a small gap in front of you. Why are you not speeding up? And it's like, well, you know, in case I need to hit my brakes. I want to be able to stop without hitting the person in front of me, but I don't know, people don't seem to get that. Um, there's a ton of cars up ahead. You can't really pass them, or that's just kind of how it is, so you just got to deal with it. And then the guy behind him is like right up against him. So he's probably under a little pressure there. But you know, if you look ahead, what, like what's the point? I don't know, I, I don't get it. Uh, some people are just so impatient though. And that's, you know, kind of another really nice thing about autopilot is I don't even care, like even if we're going 50, <laughs> I'm like, whatever, we'll get there eventually. I'm not too worried about it. So all these little kind of speed changes and things, the car just handles them so well. Um, you know, you always keep a hand on the wheel, you always pay attention, but you don't have to do all these little kind of micro interactions that make driving really kind of annoying and stressful. I will just tell the car to get over here. Hopefully it'll do it. I'm gonna just do it myself. It's taking too long. Um, so those are that's kind of one of the instances where the car is just not good enough yet. At um, I mean it's not a big deal, but like that truck had a turn signal on over to our left, and like obviously he's gonna slow us down. So I got over to the lane that at the time that lane was slower. So the car's never gonna you know go in that lane. It can't see that that guy's turn signal is on. Um, but I wanted to get in this lane knowing he would get over and that lane would become faster. The car can't really do that. So then here, I'm gonna just get over here. And we can turn autopilot back on in this lane. So you can see even at these highway speeds, my energy usage here has been going down as, as we uh, keep going. Uh, I'm not going slow, I'm not really driving conservatively at all. If it was a little warmer out, maybe 65 or so, this number would be even lower. Lots of 
bumps and stuff in the road. Michigan roads are just really terrible most of the time. So overall, my drive to work is about 150 feet or so of elevation drop. Uh, so the efficiency on the way to work is usually just a little bit better than going home. braking there, I think from the car in front of this truck. So the Tesla uh, autopilot can see, of course the car in front of you, but can also see the car in front of that by bouncing the radar um, off the ground under the, the car that's in front of you. Um, and it's really nice because, so, oh, Model 3 is on the other side over there, if you saw it. Um, it's nice because if, you know, let's say this truck is, you know, going full speed and the car in front of him slams on his brakes but then the truck doesn't see it keeps driving, my car will actually brake without the car in front of me braking because it can see, you know, farther ahead. Uh, and I've had that actually happen to me. I had the car slowing and I was kind of like, why is the car slowing down right now? The guy in front of me is not hitting his brakes. And then he swerved out of the lane to avoid hitting the person in front of him. Uh, and I didn't have to do anything because my car had already begun slowing uh, to avoid that. So, at this part of my commute, things can get just a tiny bit annoying with autopilot because the lane you see to the left, uh, the yellow line there, it's actually open right now. That's a drivable lane. Um, so you see, I don't know if you can see it yet, but you'll see on the left the green arrow up there. That means that lane is open and available for use. So during rush hour, they'll open that lane, you know, to help traffic flow. Um, but autopilot won't cross solid lines. So sometimes it'll think this is the passing lane, and if there's nobody around, it makes me move into the right lane. When I'd rather be in the middle lane, I don't, you know, I don't want to be in the right lane blocking merging traffic and, and getting caught up by slower people. So um, rarely, usually there's enough traffic to keep me in this lane, but rarely at this point I will sometimes just, you know, click here um, and disable that so that the car won't change lanes on me, um, just because. I don't need to go any fast. I mean, this is plenty fast. Usually, I actually go closer to this. Um, but I don't need to be passing people. I don't really want to get out of this lane. You know, all those kind of things. So, we actually are going to go a little faster. Everybody's just, everybody's just cruising today. Fusion Hybrid merging back there. It was the plug-in version. That's another nice car. But, you know, all those hybrids, so, you know, I considered, instead of this car, I did consider, like, the Chevy Volt. Um, that's another car I think is actually really nice. Uh, and then, you know, being in Metro Detroit, uh, I know lots of people that work for the big three, and so you can get those family discounts and all that. Um, but, you know, the electric range was only about 50 miles, and my commute being 70, it was like, of course I would still save money over gas, but with how expensive that car is and everything, the savings just kind of weren't worth it. Um, considering I couldn't even make it one day, you know, I'd still be using gas every single day, just, you know, a lot less. Um, now, if I could have made my round trip to work with the Chevy Volt, so if I had 50 miles, you know, round trip, and in the winter, it'd have to be, what, half that, right? Or say I had a charger, I don't have any charging at work, um, so if I had a charger at work, I could plug in or something. It would have been a lot harder decision, you know, to pick this car over the Volt. Now, you know, if money is no object, obviously, <laughs> this is the car I would want, um, 
but for most people that's not the case and you know you really have to con consider your budget and, and weigh all those different options uh, and I actually think I would have really enjoyed the Volt if it had enough electric range to uh, make my commute every day I should rephrase that make my commute every day only on the battery obviously it can make my commute every day because it has you know the backup uh, gas generator but uh, I wanted you know full electric every day and then for longer you know days or, or road trips or whatever that backup would be fine So those speeds up in the middle, if you're seeing those, those are just suggested. And it's really weird because the speed limit is 70, but if there's absolutely no traffic, the suggested is always 60. Uh, I really don't get why they do that, uh, but the signs are nice if there's an accident or something. They can close any of the three lanes. So, you know, let's say the left lane is normally closed, it's not rush hour, but there's an accident in the middle lane, they will put an X above the middle lane and say that lane is closed and then open the left lane. So then you can kind of route the traffic around the accident. Um, and then they'll also change the speed suggestion based off of how traffic is flowing. So this is not needed at all. <laughs> this, it says it's changing lanes to follow the route, but it, it doesn't need to do that. Um, so I, I don't know. Just a little, you know, the maps aren't perfect for this, that's for sure. And then we go around this big bend. I'm always a little wary here um, because people in that right lane like to come close to this lane. Um, like that truck, jeez, man. Um, they just, I don't know, for whatever reason, they always drift over to the left. I don't know why they can't stay in their lane around that bend. We'll save that clip and see how close he really got. So my exit is on the right up here, so, oh, changing lanes to follow route, the car was going to do it anyway. So I actually <laughs> hit the turn signal like at the exact same time that that popped up, so that's pretty funny. Um, so yeah, I usually like to get over a little earlier than the car does. Uh, the highway does split here, it goes right and left, and I have to go right and then my exit will be on the right. Okay, so traffic is slowing a lot up here. Um, you can see how the car is going to handle this. Okay, so the car's slowing. So obviously this guy's in the lane, but the, the reason I was a little concerned is because our exit's over here on the right. Um, but we'll let the car do its thing. So now it's ready to change lanes. It puts the turn signal on. See if this guy will let us in. Looks like he is letting us in. The car gets over. Perfect. Lots of huge bumps on the terrible roads. I haven't had any problems yet. I do avoid a lot of potholes. <laughs> Hopefully I get no. That's you know, that's another reason I wanted the 18 inch tires. Because uh, we have way too many potholes here for low profile tires. It's just not worth it. This person's getting over, the car now slows for them, so it takes it a minute to realize somebody's coming in the lane. And then the car turns on the turn signal and does all this exiting and everything. So at this point, it's going to switch from navigate on autopilot to just normal autopilot. So that's what that means. Um, and then this splits into three lanes, and it normally takes the middle lane, but I like to be in the right lane, so let's just let it do its thing for a second here. Uh, and... Yeah. So, okay, I took over the steering unintentionally. But that's fine. So I'll get in this lane. And that is pretty much it. My work is uh, just up here. So I'll end the video there. Um, the car is awesome. I mean, obviously, 
you know, electric cars have these thing, this, this still, this kind of old stigma where they're good for around town driving, slow driving, not going very far. Um, but you know, again, I'm going 70 miles a day. I, I regularly have days that are over a hundred miles and it's so much more convenient in, in this car because again, waking up every day with full tank or, you know, at 80% or 90% or hundred percent, you know, whatever you need, you just charge it up to that and then you're good to go. And then if you do need range while you're out and about, the superchargers are just so fast. Um, I mean, come on, are you, if you, you know, have a 600 mile day every day, I could see, okay, you don't want to add. 40 minutes of charging, but even if you have a 400 mile day every day, you can start the day with, you know, 280 miles or so, you know, if you don't have a hundred percent charge, do most of your driving, go to the supercharger for 20 minutes and then finish your day. So I don't know. These cars are awesome. So that's it. That's my commute. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them below. If you're enjoying my videos, uh, please hit like and get subscribed and I will see you next time.